Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the episode. episode. Hi Kelly. Hi Marsha. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing great too. I have been decluttering, purging. <laughs> you know, you've been do- you've been tossing up the stash. Tossing up the stash. That's right. That is what you. But actually, it. I want to know: has any tossing been going on, or has it just been reorganizing the stash? Well, let's just ha- talk about it. Okay. Yeah. So um, T- tell me everything. Last time we, last time we recorded, I think I had already started. I had taken everything downstairs and laid it out on the studio floor. All the all the knitting yarn from various places in the house because I keep it in various places. Um, Mm -hmm. I dug stuff out. Then I decided I needed to move it upstairs to the spare room where I could close the door and nobody could see it. Nobody mean, meaning Robert couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. Um, just because I wanted to leave it messy for a while Mm -hmm. and he likes things cleaned up and neat. So yes, And he was cleaning the living room, taking down the tree, throwing away Christmas ornaments. So we did do some some tossing of the Christmas ornaments. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So, you know, I was in that mood. So I brought it all upstairs and I laid it out on a tablecloth. It's about the size of a double bed sheet, Mm -hmm. flat sheet. And then I started organizing it. And I, I did a little bit more organizing today. It's been out for more than, well, for two weeks, essentially. It's been sitting mm-hmm. here, <laughs> inspiring me and also making me wonder about myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Dr. Marsha is here to listen to the So, so tell I, me all about it. <laughs> okay, well, I decided to, uh, we talked a little bit about what how I should go about the organization process and mm-hmm. and um, so the first thing I ended up doing was taking all of the commercial skeins uh, mm-hmm. commercial hand dye well just commercial skeins that I had purchased uh, mm-hmm. on purpose <laughs> 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 that I had obtained on purpose and I put I, it ended up that was I thought I thought this was true and I was right it's a very small batch, not quite as small as I thought, mm-hmm. because I still have all that ru- rauna, the finish yarn that we got oh, went right. crazy on the year yeah. I was making argyle socks, and we got all these different color combinations. Um, mm-hmm. So I had quite a bit of that. Um, I had quite a bit of that still unused, um, but it fits in. I have this uh, wooden like rice basket, I guess it's called. I I got Mm -hmm. it at a garden show. It's a wooden basket that came from, I think it came from, they said it came from Vietnam or someplace. Anyway, it's not that big and it fits all of it. Mm -hmm. So that's my like, I got this intentionally kind of yarn. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the rest of it is a combination of hand spun leftovers some of which are hand spun (laughs) um and spirit yarn Mm -hmm. and then a little bit like a small amount of like farm yarn that i didn't include in the commercial skeins Um, it's all natural colors and it went it seemed like it went better with the um batch of yarn that was all you know a lot of it was hand spun so i put it in that in that batch but i you know i so i have I have uh, over 13 skeins of rug yarn plus extra balls left over from previous rug rug projects. I have five skeins of extra bulky yarn. Um, I have over six skeins of white hand spun or, you know, natural cream hand spun. Mm Mm-hmm. I have seven skeins of cotton hand spun for a cotton project. I have 
about six skeins of luxury, what I would consider to be luxury yarn. Some of that is leftovers. There's mm-hmm. silk and silk and cotton and silk or wool angora and that kind of stuff. I have three skeins of hand spun from commercial dyed braids. That's mm-hmm. it. And lots of leftovers. Some Wensleydale skeins, some Suffolk skeins, a bunch of CVM leftovers. Anyway, so what am I going to do? The problem with all that is what am I going to do with it, you know? Like I was thinking with the with the hand spun, like I don't want to get rid of it. I mean, I don't want to throw it, right? I don't want to toss it. I'd, I'd, right. I'd want it to be used, but... But when I think about using the rest of the yarn from all the hand spun sweaters that I made, and I've got quite mm-hmm. a bit of yarn, I think I have five hand spun sweaters that I have leftovers for. Mm-hmm. And when I think about, you know, make a hat or I can make mitts or I can make a scarf, like that feels like making an adult layette. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 I, I, I it's funny. <laughs> I, I just I, I don't feel like that's an adult thing to wear a hat and a sweater and mitts and socks that all match. <laughs> no. That yeah. So well because I because I I even sometimes question if I have on hand knit socks, hand knit sweater, hand knit hat. Like then to put the scarf on seems like it's too much, like it's too much hand knit and they don't even match, you know? Right, so right. if it's all matching, like, and you don't want to make something for Robert because that's not cool having matching um, <laughs> husband and wife matching outfits. Out of the, the CVM that I made the Orca's Run sweater, I did make mm-hmm. him a hat with the Orca pattern on it, which mm-hmm. he likes. Um, but yeah, we don't actually dress alike <laughs> and go out. <laughs> um, so and i have made some charity hats with some leftover hand spun but and it's you know it's not washable so anyway that's kind of my 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 dilemma with this yarn is i like it and i want to use it but i don't know what i'm going to use it for um what i did do though is i a lot of the partial skeins i did collect them all and I put them into my mother bear kit mm-hmm. um, for making mother bears. And I had I realized when I did that that I had a half a bear in the bag. And I haven't made a mother bear in a really long time. And I I I realized why when I um, put the additional yarn into the bag. It's because I was making a bear. And I was using like three skeins of different weird some some hand spun leftovers mm. to get to the right weight mm. of yarn for the bear. <clears throat> you know, I was holding two strands together, holding three strands mm-hmm. together, running out because I was using these little, you know, hazelnut yeah. sized balls of yarn and then having mm-hmm. to splice in a new one. And I thought, why was I making my life so hard? Mm-hmm. Why not when I get down to that little amount of yarn or if I have something that's really so fine that it doesn't make a good bear like why would I put it in the kit so I so I cleaned up that bear mother bear kit put in new threw away some stuff from there put in new yarn into the mother bear kit and then I actually got inspired to finish that bear and make it make another bear which that's Mm -hmm. getting into my projects but I did get a little bit inspired by by stuff Mm -hmm. so um, so that was good, but it does kind of show me just some kind of gaps in in what I have or overages, overages and mm-hmm. gaps. Like, do I really need this much of my leftovers? No, because I don't know what I'm going to do with them. And why do I spin so much yarn for a sweater? I guess because I don't know <laughs> how much I'm going to need and I don't want to run out. Well, actually, I would say that's true. I, I, for me, that's true because, okay, so all right now I'm knitting on with my hand spun, which I'll talk about this project later on, but I didn't have enough for a sweater. I'm always trying to do enough for a sweater, but I didn't have enough, so I had to spin a con- another color to make stripes. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, I think 
I don't know. Also, I think too, with your spinning, you're not, uh, you're spinning the yarn to be spinning the yarn. Yeah. You're not spinning the yarn necessarily f- to make the sweater, isn't you? Sp- right. We talked about this before is that the fiber sort of tells you what it wants to be, mm-hmm. and what type of yarn it wants to be. And then you spin that yarn and then you have to figure out what project. Right. So you're just, you're caught up in the, you know, you're, you're spinning yarn. You're not thinking about what it's going to yeah. be. And um, the difference too is the, like you're spinning braids. Mm-hmm. And I'm just spinning what comes off my drum carter. Right. And so, you know, if you have a full fleece <laughs> and you just card and card and card, then you feel like you have to spin everything you carded. And that might be more yeah. than what you need yeah. for the sweater. So I am not complaining at all. I have a, a, a wealth, <laughs> a wealth of yarn, um, including a wealth of my own hand spun. Um, Mm -hmm. But it was good to see, for example, with the rug yarn, like, okay, I have really some really nice rug yarn, but a lot of it is left over from a wall hanging project that I did that was in greens and grays, mostly. Um, And so that's what I have most of is green and gray. And then I have that and a little bit of burgundy. And then I have the the combo spin that I did that's more uh, blues. Um, but it's all really super dark, and I think I mm-hmm. need something light uh, because otherwise the values are all going to be the same. And whatever pattern I do in a rug, a punch needle piece, or um, is is gonna, you won't really see the pattern. I think. So you're so they're too dark to over dye another. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. In so, fact, a um, lot of them are dark gray. Over dyed with green, dark gray, mm. over dyed with burgundy. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're too dark to over dye. So I just, I, maybe I need to spin some more rug yarn well, in so, a lighter okay. color. <laughs> so I'm going to interject here with a few comments. Dr. Marsha has a few comments. Good. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not a licensed therapist. Um, no, I was going to say, so... With However, Marcia, hands, I'm, I'm going to interrupt I, you. However, yes. you are a licensed yarn stasher. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Some of the yarn from, uh, you know, your, the adult layette yarn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, all that leftover sweater yarn and whatnot. Can, and I don't know what the weight of it is pretty fine it's not like it's worsted weight but anyway here's my point can it be combined to to my go-to project the garter squish blanket can it be combined in some ways to make doubled up or added to uh, let me just back up that and this is not how you have to do the garter squish but the idea is you have one main color that goes through the whole blanket Mm -hmm. that's worsted weight and then you have you keep changing out the other worsted weight yarn that you're carrying along with it uh, to make the stripes or the pattern or whatever you decide to do. Oh. But it doesn't have to be that way, you know. It could, right. So I don't know if you have enough yarn that would could be enough of a background color, or no. like my case where I didn't have enough yarn. Uh, remember, there was sort of that camel colored yarn mm-hmm. that I was using as the background, but I didn't have enough. It was the same shade to do the whole thing, so we did a gradient. Do you right. have enough of the hand spun that could be the background color uh, that maybe you over dye to make it more similar and do like a gradient? And then, do you know what I'm getting at? Yeah, or do yeah. You just need to spin more yarn <laughs> to <laughs> well. Uh, to use up the sweater bits. Yeah, that's an uh, interesting the, idea. If you have a lot of the... Because didn't you say one sweater, you have like three skeins left over? Something like that. Can it be... Is that the... Uh, was that that sort of terracotta color for yeah. the f- dark green forest sweater? Mm-hmm. I have three Can, skeins of that. Plus a ball so, of it. Plus another so, skein that's undyed of the exact same yarn. So even though you have, say you have three, possibly four skeins of that yarn and dyed that terracotta color, can you over dye it? So make some, um, now it is a, it's a pretty deep terracotta, but can you make one like brown and one burgundy or something? And then Mm -hmm. use those as the contrasting color for a background color. 
Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a really good um, idea. Because you sent me a picture of all these bits. <laughs> yeah, you can put it in the show notes if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at you. You have a lot of natural colored yarns that maybe you could just dye. Well, and what is it? So this is not good podcasting because people cannot see this picture. But the picture of the, there's a whole bunch of natural colored yarn uh -huh. that's undyed. It looks like it's your hand spun undyed. Which? I don't know what the yarn... Okay, so I'm looking at the picture. It shows that the right-hand side of the sheet in the lower right-hand corner. Oh, uh-huh. Um, I don't know how much is there, but if you could just take all those yeah. bits and um, that you could maybe dye that if that's enough for your background color. That might be. That's six skeins. The The two balls in the front of that picture are bulky, so that wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the, there are there are six skeins of the... Oxford that I spun this summer and th or three skeins of the Oxford that I spun this summer and three skeins of the Columbia that I spun the summer before I think in the summer spin in so there's six skeins there they're roughly the same they're three ply roughly the same weight mm -hmm. um, and also they have the same kind of the same feel to them they're not mm -hmm. identical but but they would go together in a project that's a really good idea I hadn't thought about a blanket of hand spun well, that garter squish is just a great way to use up a lot of yarn because mm -hmm. you're using it. You're help, even if it's worsted weight, you're holding it double. Right. And uh, and people and had again, mentioned have to people had been mentioning that, you know, like like, oh, that sounds fun. And I thought it mm -hmm. sounded fun too. But the thing I always thought was I don't have enough. Mm -hmm. I don't <laughs> that sounds funny. I don't have enough of the same kind of thing to be able mm -hmm. to do it. But I do if I think about my hand spun and using the sweater leftovers. Mm -hmm. I do have enough, I think. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. And then I'm I'm going to, I bought a pattern. So it's Lily Scrap Blanket. Okay, and I'm going to look it the up The designer is Jen Peck. And it's like a chevron pattern. It's knit with fingering weight. And I don't know what all, I mean, this may not work, but oh. you knit very. And so what you do is you basically take all of your sock weight scraps mm -hmm. and you just wind them into one big just randomly wind all the colors into a big giant ball mm -hmm. and you just loosely knot them together so you can either you can knot them together like with a long tail and then just choose to weave them in or you can put a, a just a loose knot and so when you get to that point you can take it apart and felt right. it if you want you know spit splice it mm -hmm. and so i'm looking at the pattern because i actually mm -hmm. printed this out and i've been gathering up my yarn um it's a free pattern yeah I'm looking um, at it right now. It takes about 1,000 to 1,400 yards. Yeah. Okay. And so it's a, it's a nice pattern because it's all, it makes a chevron shape mm -hmm. kind of. And um, as I say, I have been, all my sock scraps I've been saving to make this blanket. And then also I have skeins of yarn that I, a sock weight yarn that I bought that I don't think I'm ever going to make socks out of it. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking just breaking those apart and putting them into the blanket. Right. But anyway, that's another idea. It's, I don't know if it's the right weight, but maybe. Something yeah, to think yeah. About. actually that would work. Because all of my hand spun it. I mean, it's the, the, the Targi lamb is heavier, but the rest of my hand spun is all about the same weight. Mm hmm Hmm. That's an interesting idea. Or holding a double and then in some places using just one skein of a heavier. Yeah, because, you know, the other thing, too, is that this is, um, I don't even think that they have a, yeah, it says gauge is not important right. for this project. Right, so it wouldn't matter. So you could just take, you could figure out what you're, if you have a heavier weight yarn, you could just figure out how many stitches to the inch you're getting mm -hmm. and then figure out, you know, how wide you want, how many you'd want to cast on. Right. You know, well, you know, that whole conversation we've had about yeah. using up yarn for the garter squish. I mean, I think the same idea with this is that you're probably not locked into a certain weight of yarn. Right. You'd have to just figure out. How, how to make whatever you're using roughly the same. 
Right. And then also, didn't somebody in our crochet along did a sort of a chevron shaped mm-hmm. blanket in, that's crocheted? Yeah. So that's another thought. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, it's a really nice, the chevron pattern is a really nice kind of traditional crochet pattern. It reminds me of my mm-hmm. grandma. She made probably yeah. millions, <laughs> millions mm-hmm. of Afghans um, out of, out of that, that pattern. Okay. Well, that's cool. That gives me some ideas. It's better than putting it in the compost pile. Yes, exactly, exactly. And, and and also, you're getting a new trailer. You might need a blanket for the trailer. Well, that's that is uh, something that I thought of too. Yeah, um, and I'm I want to finish that quilt. That's another thing I dug out was my pieced quilt top. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I want to finish that quilt for the trailer. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, that's a good idea. I did get inspired to make one and moving into my projects besides the two bears, I did get inspired uh, and I used up quite a bit of yarn that had been hanging around for a while um, Mm -hmm. to make a cat bed for Minnie. Mm -hmm. Um, She had been sleeping on a a sample woven piece, narrow piece that I had and we kind of just folded it and positioned it, but it kind of looked messy and, so um, I made a, a basket inspired by some of the people in our uh, crochet along. I made a basket for her out of some various old yarns from the the weaving room and mm-hmm. the early 2000s when the when those um, felted bags were kind of popular. Mm-hmm. And I had some left over from that. And one of the yarns, I, I, I did call you about this, um, but I wanted to tell people about the yarn that had cow hair in it. I thought that was pretty Oh, yes, we were going to talk about this. Yeah, and I, I, didn't, I didn't put that in the show notes, but I'll just, I'll just say that um, there was this one singles yarn from Sweden that, um, yeah, that was like 20% cow hair. And you looked something up and... and it suggested that it was um, Highland cow. So that was very interesting. But the, but the main point of this is I got rid of probably, let's see, I got rid of two balls and three pretty close to full, par- full but partial skeins. So mm-hmm. that made a big dent. One of those little piles that was on the, um, on, laying on the tablecloth is gone, totally gone, because I used it in okay. this in this cat bed. So that's nice. That's very good. Yeah. yeah, and then I felted it, so it's sitting on the it's sitting on the porch right now. So that's a besides the two mother bears, that was another finished project. So I finished, um, well, I finished the Pebble Brook beanie that I was working on last time out of the mm-hmm. Invictus Club yarn, um, and then I finished the two mother bears, and I finished the cat. So I've been. I've been uh, crocheting up a storm during my vacation from school. So Mm -hmm. it's been really nice. Nice. Yeah. Oh, and then one other crochet project uh, that I did as as a a nod to our crochet along, which we'll talk about our winners later in the episode, I'm going to be teaching in the classroom on campus this semester. As everyone knows, I'm so excited. And (laughs) I'm going to have to wear a mask and... The masks don't really fit my face very well, or, and and the ear loops, um, mm-hmm. I always have to shorten them, and I usually would shorten them with a little knot. I tried twisting them, and that didn't work very well. I tried shortening them, the ear loops, with a little knot, and that works okay, but it makes my ears stick out. And mm-hmm. I don't need my <laughs> ears to stick out any more than they already do. <laughs> so... <laughs> My vanity. And, uh, but this, I saw this uh, uh, ear saver. It's called One Button Mask Ear Saver. And it mm-hmm. actually holds, for me, I put it going up over the kind of the top back of my head. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the, the actual N95 masks have two elastics. One goes behind your neck and one goes over your head. Mm-hmm. And so I use it like that. It connects to the ear pieces, but then it, straps across my head and it works great and i got to use Mm -hmm. a button from my button stash yeah very nice because that you know it's adjustable you you 
close it with a button. I wore it while I um, unpacked boxes and threw away stuff. Again, another organizing and throwing away project. Um, I, I wore it for about four hours one day while I uh, unpacked things in my office at school and it, mm-hmm. it, it didn't slip off. It was comfortable. I didn't have that ear pain that you sometimes get from yeah. wearing the mask for too long. Um, and I didn't have to really adjust it or anything. So it was nice. And I got, get a nice tight fit. It feels like wearing one of those, um, you know, the N95s because it's mm-hmm. actually holding on from the back of my head. So anyway, really nice. That was my last crochet, most recent crochet project. So um, uh, that did not use up any stash to speak of. <laughs> Very small project. Took me about an hour, mm-hmm. including sewing on the button. So, mm-hmm. and then I'm, I'm working on the pair of socks that I was talking about last time out of the um, Bob Ross, happy little mistakes. And I did, the other thing I got inspired to do, now this is with leftovers, but I promise never to wear it at the same time as I wear the sweater. <laughs> <laughs> the The yarn is, again, Invictus yarn. It's the Yak Lux that I mm-hmm. used for my uh, Rachel sweater. Mm-hmm. And then that yarn that you got me. Uh, oh, right. I can't remember what it was called. But the, it was, anyway, it's all in kind of blue green. It was the yarn from Iceland. From Iceland, yeah. Um, and so, Ooh, anyway, I've forgotten the name too. I, um, I, I saw those scraps were sitting there. Pretty significant amounts were left over. And so I put them all in a knitting bag and I'm making, um, I'm making a sock head hat to replace the sock head hat that I have. Um, that I have been wearing since 2015 Mm -hmm. and it's so faded that it's pretty much unrecognizable the difference between the outside and the inside of the yarn. So I'm almost to the, to the crown decreases on a sock head hat. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it'll be nice. This will be for, you know, going on walks and stuff. I I Mm want not to match my sweater. Although I guess, <laughs> although I guess I could, but I don't know. I don't know about. Oh, that, I, there's no crime in wearing it to match. The, you know. Yeah. What it, the it, knitting fashion patrol is going to come and arrest you? Well, we'll see if I. I don't know. Just it, <laughs> yeah. After I've laughed so much about adult layettes, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, that's my new my new start was this sock head pattern. So that's so I've got two things on the go: the socks and. Um, this sock head hat pattern mm-hmm. and all the rest of my stuff this for this week is finished objects. Yay. Very nice. Yeah. As you say, though, it's still in my house. <laughs> Actually, the mother well, and, bears uh, are going and the, mm-hmm. um, the beanie is going. So those are all, those are all to be sent away. I haven't done it yet, but. Well, and let me ask you, I, I'm just going to go back to the tossing of the stash. Mm-hmm. Because the other thing, too, I, I guess I wanted to ask is, do you even want the, um, uh, do you want to make anything out of that yarn? I mean, uh, the yarn I've already knit with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to, I, I don't want it to not be knitted. That's another possibility is pass it along to someone else. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so. uh, let it be their problem. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it may not be their problem. It's spirit yarn. They right. Just be, exactly. You have to, don't think so negatively, Kelly. That's I mean. <laughs> true. It would be their. It would be something they really uh, wanted. It would be their. Um, I don't know. It always feels like a feels like a a, a great find when mm-hmm. you when you find a good spirit yarn. So so yeah, it'd be someone else's great find. I'm going to just say something. This has absolutely nothing to do with knitting, but about what other people value or or mm-hmm. want. That we don't want. And I I don't know if they have this in the rest of the country, but here in Seattle, there's this buy nothing. It's buy nothing and then fill in your neighborhood. Oh, uh-huh. And, and so I live in the Maple Leaf neighborhood, so it's buy nothing Maple Leaf. And you cannot sell anything. It's all stuff that you give away for free or you can ask for things. And so I've been posting up things you know, like I, I got rid of a toaster, like things that were duplicates that I didn't, you know, 
Right. Because I've combined households. And so I, so, so, and so it's surprising to me sometimes the things that I thought actually people would want, nothing, crickets. <laughs> so I just bring it to the goodwill. And, and then I've also had a problem, and I hope I have no buy nothing Maple Leaf listeners listening to this, but sometimes it's really difficult to get people to come in a timely manner to pick things up. Mm-hmm. And so then I'll, it, it'll be like seven days, and then I'll tag, tag, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, and then they never show up. And so I just take it to the Goodwill. Mm-hmm. But I had all those styrofoam pellets, the packing material, and I had been saving it because with the new deck, my thought was I was going to put – in the bottom, ha- fill half the pots. These I have very heavy concrete pots mm-hmm. that were going to go on the deck. And so to reduce the weight, um, I've heard that you actually put in styrofoam pellets in the bottom of your pot. Not loose, but I had bought like a mesh bag so that mm-hmm. I was going to fill the pellets and put in the bottom of the pots. I ended up not doing that because I used smaller pots. The bigger pots went elsewhere. So I had 10, I think I, I had eight trash bags of pellets. Oh my and gosh. You you can't get rid of that stuff. It just goes in the it, it can't be recycled if it it just goes in the garbage. Yeah. And so I went to two UPS stores and they wouldn't take it because they can't take it anymore because of the pandemic. Oh. I went to a UPS and a FedEx store and they wouldn't take it. And so I thought I'm just gonna post it up on Buy Nothing Maple Leaf. And within twenty minutes, a guy said, I think I, we can use that at work. Let me check with my boss. He checks with his boss and he comes and picks it up that evening. Wow. And he comes by and he picks up eight bags of this stuff. And I was like, all this stuff, like, it's so weird. The stuff that I think has value, <laughs> nobody right. wants, but the stuff that has, like, it's actually a burden to me. Like, it's a actually huge garbage. Burden. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally garbage. <laughs> well, it does. It's not really, I don't want it to be garbage, but if right. I was to dispose of it, it would be considered garbage. But I thought somebody, ha- it, you can use it. I just can't find anybody. Anyway, yeah. And he was so prompt. He was the fastest of any of my buy nothing people, <laughs> you know? Oh, anyway, my gosh. one man's uh, junk is another man's treasure, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. But moving on, the, the infamous Nanny Meyer tea cozy for Brian. I'm halfway done with the second side. I do a couple of rows, oh, yay. Or, you know, a day. So I'm making progress on that. Still working on my socks. Nothing to report there. I'm three quarters of the way done with the quick switch hat by Abby Nitz, the one I'm making for Ben. The yarn is Meeker Street Olives Outerwear DK. So I'm working on that intermittently. So I have kind of moved on. What I'm really sort of obsessed with now is this Franco.com uh, sweater. I don't know what to call it. I'm just calling it my Franco design sweater or the striped sweater for Ben, but this one I'm making for my son, Ben. And just to remind people, it's the hand spun in a kind of a barber pole, green and brown, and then a, a solid, uh, three ply brown. And I talked about this in the last episode that I, you know, I had measured Ben and, uh, entered all the information into Franco.com and could print it out my pattern. And I forgot last Saturday to join their group. I completely forgot. So I'm going to try every Saturday at 2.30, they have a Zoom call. And I'm going to try and join that again uh, this Saturday. I made a note to myself because I forgot last Saturday, but to show them my progress. But what I started, the reason I had spun the solid brown is I didn't have enough of the brown green. So I'm just going to call it the green, but I didn't have enough of that to do an entire sweater. So I spun the brown and the idea I was going to do stripes. So Kelly, you and I had a big conversation about this because I had joined under the arms. And at that point I, I started, I did one stripe before I joined under the arms and then joined under the arms and I knit another four um mm-hmm. brown stripes separated so my 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 stripe sequence was going to be uh three brown excuse me three mm-hmm. rows of brown six rows of green three rows of brown six rows of green and i was going to do that all the way through the sweater but after doing um five repeats of that I got concerned about how much yarn I was going to have. I wouldn't, I didn't think I'd have enough green to finish the whole sweater and the arms and the collar and everything. So 
I called you and we had a really great conversation. And of course, your go-to striping sequence, right? Which is the yeah. Fibonacci sequence. Go Fibonacci. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I ripped back. Um, and Kelly, how should we describe this? Well, you explain Fibonacci. Okay, so it's- the Fibonacci sequence, it starts with one. And then the second number to the sequence is also one. And then the third number of the sequence is two, because if you add one and one, you get two. And then the th- next number in the sequence, you take the two and add it to the previous number, the one, and you get three. And then three plus two is five. And so each number in the sequence is the sum of the two numbers prior. And yeah. all of those numbers are called Fibonacci numbers. You don't have to use them in order, um, but I like to use them in order. Mm-hmm. And so you have um, your stripe, you're using them for your stripe sizes, right? So three right. Row, a three row stripe is one size. A five row stripe is another size. That's another Fibonacci number. The next Fibonacci would be three and five is eight. So an eight row stripe would be another Fibonacci number. And then eight and five is 13. And so that's another Fibonacci number and they get bigger as they the stripes get bigger as they go right depending on how many stripes you know how many stripes you want and how you organize them so Mm -hmm. so tell us what you're doing Marcia so first I'm going to say that the green is considered my my main color so every stripe brown stripe is separated by six rows of green Mm -hmm. that's going to be consistent through the sweater right yeah but then my brown I'm doing uh, four stripes of brown with three rows of brown. So a three-row brown stripe four times, then a five-row brown stripe three times, and then an eight-row stripe twice. Then the plan is to do um, uh, six rows of the green and then my ribbing will be all in the brown. Mm-hmm. And so the next sequence should be um, 13 rows, which I think is going to be enough for my ribbing. That's what we talked about. Yeah. And I hope that makes sense to what I'm saying. Now, um, and I think this is all going to work out perfectly because if we add up all these rows, it's uh, 97 rows, which will be... a um, about what I, uh, n- that plus the yoke equals about 21 and a half inches. Perfect. I'm sorry. I, let me, I said that wrong. Those stripe sequence plus the yoke equals 19 and a half inches was what I need for the body before I start the ribbing. Mm-hmm. And then the ribbing will be the extra two inches to make the body length the 21 and a half inches. And I said, I hope I'm saying that in a way that makes people, that people can understand. Yeah. Yeah. I think you did. Uh, although, I mean, I was there with you when you were working I know. it out. Um, but I, I think so, it'll be nice because you'll have you'll have four small stripes, mm-hmm. and then you'll have three medium-sized stripes, and then you'll have two large stripes, and then you'll have one really large stripe in the ribbon. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so it's kind of getting heavier. You know, the weight of the dark brown is getting heavier as you go down. It's getting less frequent, yeah. but they're getting mm-hmm. but the stripes are getting wider. So I think it'll look really nice. I I have never been, I have to say, I have never been disappointed by Fibonacci. So I have my little uh, cheat sheet that I will um, take a picture of and put in the show notes so people can see visually what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And um, I've checked off, you know, what I've done so far. People will see what I'm doing. It'll be obvious, I think, when you see when I take a picture of it and post in the show notes. Um, And then the plan is... When I finish the body, I'm going to go back and do the collar next in the green. And then we're going to do, I'm going to do another assessment of the, <laughs> of the yarn supply. And then we're going to have to figure out stripes for the, the sleeves. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure if I will just, I, I mean, have a bit of a dilemma because, well, that's not exactly true. I guess the sleeves are about the length, well, the sleeves are about the length of the entire body. So that means my stripe sequence is going to be a little bit different because mm-hmm. 
the entire fit body of the finished sweater is 21 and a half inches. A part of that is um, solid green. Right. The sleeves are 21 and a half inches of stripes. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have to do some, there, there's going to be another phone call. <laughs> Get to the. <laughs> another, another consultation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a consultation. But I have, uh, yeah, so I will have to talk. I will actually talk to Dr. Locke, who really is a doctor <laughs> of mathematics. Um, so uh, to help me through this, and because the math will work, right? I have yeah, faith in the math. Yeah. So it, your only constraint for the sleeves is going to be how much yarn you have left. Yes. And so Ben may get a short sleeve sweater. <laughs> <laughs> he may have um um uh what do they call uh like a uh, wrist um uh, bracelet length uh, yeah bracelet length yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh well i i think you'll have it i mean i think you'll have enough it's just a matter of how you how you configure it yeah actually i'm sort of laughing because he might actually wear um, bracelet length, a bracelet length sweater because he was home last weekend. And I said, what he was wearing, I said, is so bizarre, but it's kind of stylish in its own way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So he had on, um, like long underwear or something. He'd gone for a bike ride. Mm-hmm. And so he had on, like, I don't know if it was long underwear or leggings or something. I guess you wouldn't call it leggings for men, but it's like some sort of warm, Pants, mm-hmm. like, I, I guess long underwear. Socks that are have, like, um, he has these Christmas socks. You know those those acrylic socks that you can buy that are have, like, Desi- dogs on mm-hmm. them or designs mm-hmm. on them? He had some Santa socks on. Uh, his Tiva sandals. Uh, cut off shorts over it, like those uh, Carhartt work pants mm-hmm. that he'd cut off. That is over it. And then he's drawn with, like permanent marker all over him and then where's the holes he's sewn up the holes hand stitched up the holes <laughs> and then <laughs> and then a hand knit saw a hat that i had made for him out of um oh no it was the i was thinking it was the one i made out of sock scraps no it was the very first hand spun i made a hat for him and my hand spun is like rope almost oh yes the five pound it, hat it's a five pound <laughs> hat and it and it has no life to it all <laughs> it does it's just like and it just like sits on his hat like a bucket hat kind of <laughs> yeah and then something on the top and i've completely lost track of what was on the top oh, but anyway gosh. but he looks kind of stylish in sort of a bizarre way i don't know so maybe he might wear a wrist <laughs> he might oh my gosh yeah anyway yeah. Uh, well they don't get so in the way so funny. you know yeah if you have so your sleeves funny. a little shorter so then my last project is the beanie the pebble brook beanie by wish upon a hook and i started this using little sheep in the big woods and so i was <laughs> I started this and was going to try and finish it for the um, crochet along. But sadly, after I ripped it out for the third time, <laughs> I, I, I like, mm, I can't, I can't rip it out. I can't do it again. So it was now I had 24 hours and I thought, I, you know what? It's okay. Mm-hmm. Even though it's, it's our, I'm participate. It's like my, crochet along and like ours that we're doing as part of our podcast. It, I, I can't do it. I couldn't do it again. So it's all uh, right. Yeah. Next time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. The thing about it is I did really well on the, the uh, brim. I got that figured out. I did really well. I had to call you about picking up the stitches, I guess I would mm-hmm. say to start the, I have to say, I don't know how we ever learn to knit or crochet without um, YouTube. Because I watched tons of tutorials about how to make the bobble. We talked. And I'm still like, these bobbles are not working right. And I, I, I still was doing them wrong. And then I ripped it out. We had a conversation. I ripped it out. I started it again. And it's like, that's not right. So I ripped it out. And like, that's when I thought I can't start it again. So, <laughs> Yeah. The thing about crochet, mm-hmm. I like charts. This doesn't have a chart. 
I like mm-hmm. charts because the thing I always found the most difficult about crochet is where, which hole do you put your hook in? Yes. Right? It's a, it's a fabric full of holes. Mm-hmm. And then you have to figure out which hole is the right hole to put the hook into for the, you know, for the next stitch. And exactly. I always found that to be really perplexing. Um, and so with mine, my baubles were stacking on top of each other because I was putting, I was picking the wrong hole. Right. So, <laughs> so my baubles just stacked on top of each other. And I'm like, that doesn't look right. And mm-hmm. um, because they're supposed to sort of nestle into each other. So it ends up sort of looking like basket weave kind right. of. Right. You know, like yeah. A, um, so anyway, I did take a class years ago on crochet. Um, and I made, I did make a shawl. Mm-hmm. You made the virus uh, shawl. Yeah, I made that. Um, but I, I'm not that familiar with crochet to do. Like I, I've been looking at like at sweaters and stuff, but I don't even know how you get gauge. I don't know how you, uh, mm-hmm. I, and like the hat is not that critical, but like, I don't really know enough about crochet uh, to do a sweater for sure. I need to at least try to figure out how to do this hat before I would move on to a sweater. And right. Then, you know, there's some great patterns out there in crochet, you know, some yeah. beautiful things. Um, Those are interesting to me because I had never thought of crochet really as garments, you know, growing mm-hmm. up, my grandma crocheted blankets, she mm-hmm. crocheted doilies, she crocheted those modular bedspreads out of little tiny, mm-hmm. small hexagon things. Um, you know, with crochet thread, but crocheting a garment, except a garment for a doll, you know, doll clothes, Mm -hmm. um, was not something that I'd ever thought of. So that was new to me when, you know, as an adult, I came back to crochet. Um, Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah, because I had sort of this sense that it was crochet was not particularly fashionable you know mm-hmm. but it's, it's com- i'm completely wrong on that it's uh, there's some really really nice patterns and so i would like to know more about it but i need a bit more hand holding yeah and i i i don't feel like i'm super comfortable with crochet and i and i especially didn't a few years ago when we first started having the crochet along but i have to admit i did a lot of crocheting growing yeah. up you know, I mean, like making doll clothes and doll blankets and blankets for stuffed animals and giant long strips that I didn't, you mm-hmm. know, have a purpose for. I, mm-hmm. I There was a lot. I did a lot of crocheting as a kid. And so yeah. the learning part of it, I don't really remember. I didn't learn mm-hmm. all the details, but the kind of the sort of basic, you know, the kind of the basics of crochet and the language of crochet I, I don't remember learning it. I just have known for a really long time. So yeah, so I yeah, can see the, you know that it's it's challenging. I I learned the just the ba- like how to chain stitch and I, but I didn't even know what the names of them mm-hmm. were. But my my great aunt showed me. Mm-hmm. But I don't know how to increase and decrease and yeah, uh, you know. So I I am interested though. And what I would say, what I do like about crochet, and I, I've said this before when we were having a conversation and when many years ago in the podcast about crochet is you only have one live stitch. So if you do make a mistake, it's really easy mm-hmm. to rip back and get back on track because it you're not having to yes you know knit back stitch by stitch or rip it all out and then pick up those stitches. It's very easy to correct. I mm-hmm. think to rip back and get started again yeah Um, yeah but not under a a crochet along deadline (laughs) (laughs) right (laughs) anyway Uh, so uh that's it for me for projects all right so kelly we need to talk about the crochet along yeah it just finished up a couple of days ago and we have some prizes so we had a one thread for chatter and finished objects. We had 14 mm-hmm. people participating um, in the discussion. And there were 20 projects that were linked. I, I'm not counting them up. I'm just there at the top of the Ravelry thread. It talks about it. So if you link your project, it counts it. Uh, nine patterns were linked and um, 84 total posts. So lots of people had multiple projects mm-hmm. um, in the in the crochet along. So I, I think it was a, a success. Um, 
And we had some new people participate. We did, and that's always fun. Mm-hmm. I like when we have mm-hmm. a different kind of along and end up with uh, some people that we haven't seen in the threads before. So, so that yeah. was a, that was a, a a nice thing to see. So let's just say the um, we have four winners, and each has won a pattern of their choice up to twelve dollars. Yeah. So, Kelly, do you want to announce the winners? Sure. Um, and winners should just get in touch with, uh, I guess me, um, and then uh, and let me know the pattern that you want. Uh, our first winner is Joy Lane One. Joy, <laughs> and uh, she made a basket that was partially my inspiration for. She and Natalie's baskets were my inspiration for making the cat basket for Minnie mm-hmm. when I saw that pile of orange yarn that I had um, when I did the tossing of the stash. So she's <laughs> our first winner. And then we have uh, Shelly, Purple Dogwood. <laughs> she's the one that made all of the uh, pumpkin and Santa hats, yes, that we talked about last time. And then our third winner... Uh, Miss Nim, Missy. She's the one who inspired me to make the ear savers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she posted about making the ear savers, and then that reminded me that I had saved that pattern for the one with the buttons long ago and that I needed to get busy on that for for my, my school semester that's coming up. And then finally, our last winner is Super Kip, Natalie. And she made quite a few things. We talked about her baby toy, um, and she made a a Moses basket uh, uh, that she is using for yarn and made quite a few things. So those are our four winners. So Joy and Shelly and Missy and Natalie, um, message me on Ravelry or email me to use at to use fiber adventures.com and let me know what pattern you would like you've won the pattern of your choice congratulations yes congratulations and thank you for participating it's fun well what do i know <laughs> it was not fun for me i'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry you didn't have fun crocheting that hat, Marsha. I do think it's a cool hat, and I do think you would oh, like it. Oh, I do it. too. Um, but another time. <laughs> I know. They, I, well, like, let's not go. Let's not go back. Right, right. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and then we still have our winter weave along going on. It starts. It started in October, but it will go through the end. Uh, through the end of March. So, Kelly, we need to talk about our next uh, giveaway that we're doing. Yes. Uh, So this is going to be, this is inspired (laughs) by the tossing of the stash. Yes, it is. So uh, one of the things that you found in your stash is, I don't know how many years ago it was, that I had acquired uh, a whole bunch of cotton yarn, mercerized cotton yarn. And we did a big die a thon when we I was at your house one summer and we still you found that you still have this uh, cotton yarn in your some of it because you have made dishcloths out of a lot of it but we still have um quite a several bit. skeins mm-hmm. quite a bit so it has inspired our next giveaway which is we're going to put a thread on the um Ravelry our Ravelry group and just let us know your favorite dishcloth pattern and you'll be entered to win a skein of our hand-dyed cotton yarn, hand-dyed by the two U's. <laughs> and you'll also receive a two U's Fiber Adventures dishcloth pattern. And if you've never made a dishcloth, just tell us um, if you're a, a dishcloth newbie. Mm-hmm. If you just uh, just check in on that um, in the thread, and then we'll have a drawing for a skein of our hand dyed cotton yarn and a dishcloth pattern. So the um, we're recording this on January 13th, so it'll be posting um, in the next couple of days. So it'll start as soon as you hear this and it ends February 28th. 
So um, go into th the thread and, and let us know your favorite dishcloth pattern and or if you're a newbie and you may be one of the lucky winners. <laughs> Yes, and I, um, I'm going to um, I'm going to lower expectations just a little bit about the dishcloth pattern, because oh, okay. because it's mostly it's mostly just a stitch pattern. Mm -hmm. I'm not a pattern designer. <laughs> I'm okay. not. I you know it won't be tech edited. It, I, I'll just let you know how I started. Oh. Uh, you know what size needles I use. Um, what the stitch pattern is that I use and how I bind it off. Um, okay. So it'll be. So yes, we will lower the bar on the, um, <laughs> yeah. on the pattern. Yes. Not a professionally designed mm -hmm. and uh, tech edited, pa edited mm -hmm. pattern, but uh, the kind of pattern that your, that your grandma would pass along to, <laughs> mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when you're sitting next to each other on the sofa. I'll send it to you on a scrap of paper <laughs> <laughs> written on the back of a receipt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, it will be I will I will write it up nicely, but it, yeah. yeah. It's not an official like designer kind of pattern because I'm not a pattern designer. Mm -hmm. Um and then one other one other thing that I just have to disclose about this yarn, if you win it, um, some of them, because it was our, our, we were experimenting with dyeing cotton, um, some of them have quite a bit of bleeding happening. And so if you're doing your dishes the first time, mm. you may find that the water turns whatever color the dishcloth is. But yeah. after you've done that first you know, after you've done that first round of dishes, um, I can yeah. I can verify. Or if you don't want to deal with that, you can just toss it in the washing machine before you even use it. Um, but not with your whites. But not with your whites, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Toss it yeah. into a colored load, um, and it'll yeah. be it, it'll be fine. Uh, but I just we really have we really have lowered the bar on this contest, <laughs> haven't we? Well, it is it is my uh, it is my de stashing, really, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you will be helping Kelly out. Yes. Um, <laughs> you will be getting cast off your... <laughs> doesn't, <laughs> doesn't that sound appealing? <laughs> uh, actually, I have to say, I do love the dishcloths made out of this. They're they're s kind of stiff and scrubby because it's a, it's a firm yarn, you know? Mm. So they, they work really well and um, you will like them if you, if you get... If you win this and you make one of those dishcloths, I think you will like it. So, All right. And then the last thing, we have some listener feedback. Um, I just wanted to... Uh I, I just wanted to to talk about um, Carolyn in Somerset, Southwest England, um, suggested because we had said, you know, what would people like to hear on the podcast in the coming year? She suggested um, that people might like to hear about yarn stores around the world and maybe a bit of the history of the yarn store or the history of the town that they're in. Um, and she mm -hmm. told us about a yarn shop called All About the Yarn. She says it's on a cobbled street called Catherine Hill. And yes, it is a hill. Um, and it's so called because hundreds of years ago, Catherine Hill is that street um, is called that because hundreds of years ago there was a chapel called St. Catherine's. Um, and so she w gave us a first little snippet of information about the yarn shop and the street that the yarn shop is on. Uh, but I thought that was a good idea. And so we may, mm -hmm. we may turn that into a, turn that into something for the, for the new year. So thanks for the, thanks yeah. for the idea, Catherine. And then um, Irena uh, emailed and said that she was so glad to hear us back that she had, had thought perhaps um, we might not be coming back. Um, she, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of, uh, the podcasts that she listens to ha have, you know, uh, sort of disbanded. Um, and so she was really glad to hear us, um, hear us coming back. And, and she did say uh, she loves, she loved it when Marsha would go on long trips. So I think that will be in the, not the near future. Um, yes. My travel buddy, Kim, and I have had many conversations about where we go next, mm. but we're not quite ready to get, <laughs> All on a plane. Mm. Yeah, we're not quite ready. I don't know. It will happen. Right. But not right, you know, right away. Yeah. Yeah. So. But it was nice to hear, um, it was nice to hear that Irena was, uh, 
was waiting for us to come back. And I have to I have to also give a shout out to Kent of Kent on Instagram because when we yes. posted the last episode, <laughs> it's so funny when um, you know the listeners have kind of inside jokes because <laughs> mm-hmm. he po- he commented on the Instagram post that he he it was good that we were uh, that our episode was up because he had been sitting and refreshing his podcast <laughs> yes. over and over. <laughs> <laughs> that gave me that gave me a laugh, and then finally Anna uh, said, "You know, cut yourself some slack." That was her mm-hmm. message to us because we were talking about missing episodes. She said, "During the pandemic, you were my company. You made my frustrations okay and normal." Uh, she mm-hmm. said, "Of course, she likes all the you know travels and conferences and knitting uh, event talk, um, but she also." likes hearing the frustrations of teaching online dogs and the isolation mm-hmm. that was uh, what most folks were going through. So she says, you keep it real. You kept it real, gave me an outside contact and reinforced all that was essential and made me laugh. So that was really nice. Thank you, Anna, for that, for that comment. And yeah, we, we do, we, we are cutting ourselves some slack. So for the, the, the difficulties of the past couple of couple of years and probably some difficulties going forward, but, but yeah, um, we'll keep sharing. <laughs> you'll hear, you'll hear me whine. <laughs> I uh, I'm going to take a picture here. I'm sitting here at my desk thinking about the dogs. Mm-hmm. I I'm going to take a picture. I'm sitting at the desk recording, and I'm just going to take a picture of Enzo laying on the bed, and I'm going to post this in the show notes. Oh, good. Yeah, he cracks me up. You know, uh, I think it's a poodle thing. I'm turning away from the microphone now. I think it's a poodle thing that they lay on their, maybe all dogs do it, but they lay, he lays on his back and then he has his head like twisted all the way back down almost to his hips kind of. It looks mm. so uncomfortable. But Yeah, it's not I every think, dog. I think it must be a poodle thing. Because they're so floppy. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. None uh, of my dogs have ever slept like that. <laughs> yeah, he's so funny. Very... He's so floppy. Anyway, yeah. uh, that's a dog story. Well, I thought, I have to say, I thought it was really very, it felt really good to know that people missed us because I wasn't really feeling guilty because it's like life gets, we just, yeah. it was busy mm-hmm. in life, you know, the teaching thing and blah, 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 all of that. But the fact that people were like, well, where are they? And refreshing the... <laughs> There were many comments about like, oh, you know, oh, good, you finally posted. We were getting worried. Mm-hmm. So that was nice. Mm-hmm. And it's also, it's nice that uh, that we have been, we, we're still in the middle of the pandemic, but that people have found us um, so enjoyable during the pandemic, mm-hmm. too. Um, yeah, it's nice yeah, to. It's very nice to hear. It is nice to hear that, that um, it's a bright spot, right, for people. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're giving people something. I don't know what I don't know exactly what we're giving them, but we're giving them something. <laughs> well, and it's a bright spot for for us too. I mean, I always look forward to I oh yeah, look forward to um, getting on and and talking to all all of you. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. So, and in fact, we have more to say. We have more on the show notes this episode um, than we yeah, can we actually fit in the episode, and that's happened to us mm-hmm. the last probably three times. So. Yeah. That we've recorded. So, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Anything I else think, we need to say? I think that's it. Okay. I'm off to a professional development for two hours. Ah. In person no, or online? On oh. Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, I'm really not off. <laughs> I'm off to the downstairs. First, I have to get dressed and then I have to uh, appear on Zoom for a professional development okay. day. <laughs> All right. So, well, I'm going to wake the dog up and take him for a walk. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> he, needs to, he needs some exercise because he's got his pandemic five that we still oh, haven't gotten mm-hmm, off. Mm-hmm. So uh, he, we're working on that. So, well, all right, Kelly. Um, we'll talk. I'll let you go. Yeah. I'll let you get to your, your Zoom call and we'll talk in two minutes. All righty. All righty. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit 2usefiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. 
I am Better in Motion, and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the two yous doing, doing our, our part, part for World, World Fleece. Fleece.